Over the centuries, generations devised ways of securing their defense. Such methods were thought revolutionary and bold, and so they were. But today, we need a lot more than thick walls, lookout towers, and the lighting of bonfires. Dawn, and rolling on an airfield by the German-Dutch border, today's example of to be forewarned is to be forearmed. This aircraft, with its curious-looking radar on top, is called an E-3A. It's an airborne early warning device that has transformed the West's ability to defend itself. Heading skywards goes an airplane call-signed NATO 36. It's one of many that day in, day out, patrol the skies over Europe. The skies over Europe. Airspace that today is peaceful, but in the event of war, would be as hostile as a hornet's nest. For the nations of the Western Alliance, the protection of this airspace from northern Norway to the east of Turkey is a formidable task, one that goes beyond the capabilities of individual nations. So, in the late 70s, the Alliance's member countries formed a unique unit, the NATO Airborne Early Warning Force. SR4, SR5, have a possible track bearing 124 for 114 nautical miles. Inside NATO 36 works a crew of 17 composed from 11 different countries. SC, SO4, I have uh, multiple stranger traffic. A team of highly trained men and women, whether Belgian, Italian, Greek, or Canadian, all brought together to operate and monitor the aircraft surveillance system. 10 miles, crossing left, right, right level 310. I'm looking. Are you? Mike Lima, 1 1 of Vector 020, targets 02080, a tracking south, 12,000 feet on Mach 0.8. NATO 36 is a flying sensor. Housed in a 30 foot wide antenna pedestal, is a narrow radar beam that revolves once every 10 seconds. And in doing so, looks down and records all movements within its scan. Ah, oh, Roger. Maintain heading at 040. He's still turning around, Oswald. Keeps turning around. Ah, Roger. From altitudes around 30,000 feet, the radar can see a block of the Earth's surface over a radius of over 250 miles. The beaming radar signals transmit to the technicians inside a picture of all air movements. This information is then communicated through various data links to ground or seaborne controllers. The system heralds a new dimension in air defense, the means to see and control events in the sky as never before. And this is why it's there. In the early 70s, it was discovered that fast, stealthy fighter bombers could dodge ground-based radar. They did this by hugging the terrain, and because the speed of their approach made distances quickly shrink, gave operators less available time for recognition. The hole in NATO's air defense posed by this new lethal threat had to be plugged. So, along came what many termed the eye in the sky, an airborne sensor that, because it looks down, gives operators an uncluttered radar view. One that allows more time for recognition, and by doing so, greatly reduces the threat of the speedy, low-level attacker. For air defense, the introduction of the airborne early warning system was a giant leap forward. 
and one of the first things was to give it a home. In the early 80s, personnel and planes began to assemble at NATO Air Base, Gallenkirchen, Germany, near the Dutch and Belgian borders. Here works a fully integrated team of airmen, soldiers, sailors, and civilians from 13 alliance nations. All engineering, administering, and maintaining the force's ability to fly mission after mission on airborne surveillance. A unit that flies a plane under the star of NATO and on its tail, the Lion of Luxembourg, the Alliance's smallest member country where the aircraft are registered. At Gallenkirchen, the day starts early. And for the flyers, a briefing of the day's mission. Mission timing, <clears throat> 7 o'clock show time for the technicians with the technician bus at 7.05. Rest of the crew will show at 7.30 for a 7.45 briefing and will depart for the airplane at 8 o'clock. We'll have roll call at 9.05, engine start at 9.10 for a takeoff, 9.30 local for an 8.30 Z. In the early morning mist, takeoff after takeoff, as aircraft head for their buried on-station orbit areas, or make for their pre-established forward operating bases, whether in Italy, Greece, or Turkey. In all, a seemingly ordinary morning. But as the day unfolded, it was to be one destined to test NATO's air defenses and a day in which an E-3A on routine surveillance would play a vital role. Rolling for takeoff goes NATO 39, an aircraft that once on station is given the code name Magic 5-0. But the first stage of the action does not take place here, but hundreds of miles away by the Arctic Circle. The place, northern Norway, a tranquil morning in the land of the midnight sun. The domes on the fjord's outcrop of rock contain three radar scanners that sweep the vast Arctic expanse between Norway's North Cape and far off Bear Island. Deep inside the rock, the ever vigilant operations room, where round the clock sit those who watch and ward. Okay, zero six zero, we'll give you a call established. The time is 0525 Zulu. And on the radar scanner appear four blips, symbols that indicate to these eyes the emergence of a familiar pattern. November, Lima, Kilo, Bravo, the blips Bravo, represent Southwest, four Soviet November, aircraft. Lima, Kilo, Bravo, two are Bravo, air refueling tankers, Southwest, the other two Sumbe, extreme long-range bombers. Zero, zero, six, and they're heading south. Strength four, altitude, Soon the air refueling tankers turn and head back home. But the other two stay on course. Airborne, on station in its orbit area, is Magic 5 0. The crew's tactical director makes contact with Norwegian ground radar. Red pipe, red pipe, this is Magic 50. Magic 50, red pipe here. Go ahead. Roger, we have Lima Golf 015 on a heading of 180, flight size of 2. He's presently at flight level 250, speed 472 knots, possible unknown. We have no known traffic in that position. My assumption is unknown ID. 
We will scramble aircraft for initial identification. At a nearby fighter base, F-16s, one of NATO's latest interceptors, rolled to what the young Norwegian pilots call a hot scramble. For up there, off the coast, is someone who's getting too close. Once airborne, the F-16 pilots receive instructions on height, range, and target position from Magic 50's fighter controller. In the clouds over the cold reaches of the Arctic Circle, the interceptors make contact. Roger. Door numbers. One, two, has lead door number. Nine, six. The Soviet aircraft still keep heading south and are soon in range of British radar. Roger, copy. 9687. Shadow, stand by further instructions. Roger, Red Pipe, uh, Magic 50. Be advised that the two bears appear to be heading towards the Pharaoh's Gap at this time. We are presently leading them by some hundred miles or so. Request you contact Bucken and advise them of the situation. We'll be uh, ready to assist. Over. On a windy Scottish hilltop stands RAF Bucken, a coastal radar station. And near to Bucken is RAF Lukers, a fighter base. And as the Soviets continue southwards, Mission 5-1, two F-4 Phantoms, is tasked. As fighters scramble to intercept off the north of Scotland, way down south off the coast of Cornwall, another mission is underway. Here, a second E-3A, codenamed Magic 5-4, is being refueled to keep on airborne standby. In-flight refueling means that the aircraft can be deployed where needed in only a matter of minutes. It all adds punch to the air defense arm. And SC-1, TAC Director. SC-1. Roger, we're switching to bucket control at this time. Request you establish a Link 11 and Forstel Lima Golf 015. In the skies between Scotland and the Shetland Isles, an example of precision air defense. Magic 5-0. Airborne during a four-hour watch are interceptors, air refueling tankers, and early warning radar, all there to keep an eye on this. It's codenamed Bear. It's an extremely long-range Russian bomber. Some two miles away is its partner, and they're both where they needn't be, just off the coast of Scotland. The interceptors shadow the two Soviet aircraft as they head towards their chosen rendezvous, NATO fleet maneuvers in the Atlantic. Bucking, bucking, this is Magic 5-0. Five 5-0, five bucking, go. Roger, be advised, uh, fighters... But during the long flight of the two Soviet aircraft, the combined vigilance of NATO forces ensure they keep in international airspace. At sea, too, task groups all help to aid those in the air. In all, a mighty team effort 
and one that was not over until the two bears were far out to sea. High in the sky, the all-seeing Magic 5-0 recorded the lot. A watcher who, from northern Norway to the far reaches of the Atlantic, saw more of the game. And Bucket Magic 5-0, request permission to RTB at this time. I'll be calling off station, over. Permission granted, have a good flight home. Roger, Magic 5-0 is off station at 1550, and I'm RTV back to home flight. Roger. Time to go home, to go off watch. But in terms of air defense, there's no let-up, for the Soviet bombers returned by the same route. Again, all down the line, alerts, rambles, and airborne surveillance. And no one relaxed till the two Soviet bears left by the way they came. Mere specks on the Norwegian Arctic probing radar, but this time heading eastwards. But some other morning, afternoon, or night, they may be back, and that's why you have to be prepared. The Airborne Early Warning Force patrols and protects Western airspace, a vital role in which an interception is but one of many tasks. Vector 270 to clear bogeys. The E-3A can also steer Allied fighters clear of hostiles. Michael Lima, 74, bogeys, 09015 and inform our own fighters as to where the enemy is. Nightingale 27, Magic 5-0 will provide fly follow to your evacuation base. It can provide vital information to assist speedy medical air evacuation or aid reconnaissance and airlift forces. Pilot, this is the tactical director, Vector 360. It can keep on the move and hamper detection and, if threatened, can summon Allied defense systems to protect it. Magic 5-0 has radar contact with the Atlantic Fleet. Over the seas, it can warn carrier task forces and other Allied ships of potential aerial dangers. Surface contacts are confirmed skunks. Plus the ability to detect and track enemy shipping. The force provides an all-pervading watch of Western airspace from Arctic wastes to the borders of Asia. From the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea, the means to cover NATO's entire northern, central, and southern flanks. What's happening at Geilenkirchen is unparalleled. Never before have so many different nations united to form one single operational unit. A force in which on duty the language is English, but off duty as varied as the national batches. On the airbase is a working example of NATO's cooperative resolve. The Alliance is one and only Air Force. Let him who desires peace prepare for war, so said a Roman senator long ago. Over the centuries, these towers, forts, and lookout points served their purpose. They help to ward off and stem potential attack. To be forewarned, thought the makers, was to be forearmed. Today, high in the sky fly those with the same resolve. Airmen and technicians of the NATO Airborne Early Warning Force are on constant skywatch patrolling and protecting the skies over Europe. 